the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise, amen. I don't know about you today, but I come to serve God, amen. Anybody come like me, come to serve the work of God on today. Anybody know God is good and worthy to be praised? Well, we know that it could have been the other way around, amen. But he gave us another opportunity to get it right, amen. And just a little bit longer to roll on, a little bit longer to tell God, thank you, amen. So who would serve a God like this, amen? One at this high and one that's look, that looks low, amen. Amen. The song says, we will fight. So if you're going to help us fight today, if you're going to help us fight, come on and say amen.
fight a spiritual war for it, warfare for the man. And believe it or not, we're in a fight right now against the coronavirus, amen. Oh, 
worry going through the day. But I was thinking to myself, Lord, you still been good to me. Yes, he has. Lord, you still been good to me. Yes, he has. I just want to sing a verse of my song with you all right.
Amen. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Good to be in the Lord's house one more time. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. It's good to be here one more time. Let us stand and pray before we enter into our message today. If you don't mind. Amen. Let us stand and pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you knowing that you are almighty God. Knowing that you sit high, you look low. Knowing that you're everywhere all at the same time. Heavenly Father, we petition your throne of grace. We ask you for a word from heaven today. Lord, help us today, O oh God. We need your help. They are sick among us, O oh God. We pray that you would touch them, O oh God. The finger of love and divine healing, O oh God. Heavenly Father, we're praying because we can't do it. But we know that you can. We know that you're able. Now, God, forgive us as we dive into your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your Bibles, Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5, verse 31 and 32, King James Version of the Bible. Good to see everybody here today. Amen. We're praying, amen, uh, for our own musician's mother, uh, Brother Corey Smothers, his mother, Sister Cecile Smothers. We're praying for her today. Amen. 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 Uh, verse 31 and 32, King James Version of the Bible. Here it reads, And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician. But they that are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. You may take your seat. Our subject today, is there a doctor in the house? Amen. Is there a doctor in the house? Amen. Our entire scripture lesson starts at verse 27 through verse 32, Luke chapter 5. Of course, we know that Luke was a what? Doctor. <laughs> he was a doctor. And if anybody knows if there's a doctor in the house, Luke ought to know. Amen. Amen. This story is in our synoptic gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Amen. It is there, this story that I'm about to tell. This is about Jesus selecting Levi, or we call him Matthew, to join his band of disciples. Amen. If you go up to verse number 27, we'll start our lesson today. It's going to be kind of short because I didn't get all my scriptures rolled down. My printer didn't work right. Amen. So anyway, we're going to put it to you in theory anyway. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So good to see you out today. Amen. With all of the news that's out and about, uh, you would think we would be here by ourselves. Amen. But thank God for your company. Amen. The Bible says in verse 27, and after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom and said unto him, follow me. And he left all, rose up, and followed him. And Levi made him a great feast in his own house. And there was a great company of publicans and of others that sat down with them. But their scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples, saying, Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? And Jesus answering said unto them, They that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, just for a moment, when we talk about this, uh, go back to verse number 27. He said that after these things, he saw a publican, a government official. Usually when they use the word publican here in, in the New Testament and in our Greek, it is talking about a tax collector. Amen. A publican, a government official, public official. But he's really talking about a tax collector. Have you heard, ever heard of, the, of, of a tax collector? We commonly call it the IRS. <laughs> the Internal Revenue Service is our tax collector. And 
for the most part, they're really not our friend. <laughs> and in Jesus' day, they were thought of as robbers. <laughs> they were thought of as robbers. I'm, I'm just, just got to paint the picture, got to set, set it up for you. Amen. And, and Jesus is here and he went forth and saw a robber. Saw a member of the IRS, the Internal Revenue Service. He went forth and saw a person who was considered to be an extortioner. Now, now let me tell you how they, how they uh, selected tax collectors back in Jesus' day. Now, now Romans were occupying uh, this land where Jesus lived. Mm -hmm. And he was, uh, they were occupying this territory. And what the Romans did is they solicited help in collecting taxes. And in, in selecting help, they said, now, this is the tax rate. You got to give us this as a minimum. But anything you get over that, that's for you. That's for you to pay yourself. All right. And then they, they, they gave a certain percentage. But, but see, most of the people who were tax collectors would go over and above that. And so they were thought of as robbers. Because they could extract this tax in the name of the Roman government. And so they would, they would go out and say, hey, you want to be a tax collector? And somebody would say, yeah, but you was going to be hated by your folk. Because you were known as a robber, an extortioner, taking more than that was required. So Jesus saw this publican. I just told you how they hire them, right? They just solicit people to come on. And if you was a Jew, it was just like a black person joining the police department. Oh, Lord, have mercy. I, I just wanted to just kind of give you a little, you know, you know, yeah, you, you, you wonder, is he going to tell on you a man doing something illegal because he is your neighbor, but he is a policeman, too? And just, to, just, you know, you just wonder if they're going to. So anyway, Jesus saw this publican, this tax collector. Amen. Now, it was thought that he wasn't the chief collector, but he was an agent of somebody who collected taxes. So so here, here he saw this publican sitting there. And, and this is what Jesus said to him. He named Levi sitting at the receipt of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. Now, that word follow me, it, it, we usually say that that is a disciple. A disciple is a person who follows. Now, when Jesus said, follow me. He didn't mean follow me just now. Can, can I see? I didn't got all my verses with me today. I would have nailed that down for you, but, but, but I, I don't have them all today. But, but, but I, I will tell you this. Do you remember Peter said we have left all? We've left all to follow you, Christ. We didn't left everything. And then now here, the same sense Jesus is saying to Levi, follow me. It is a continual following. It's not this, you know, come up here and take my hand. And that's it. And go back and sit down. No, 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 no. This follow me has to do with continuous following. And, and the Bible said when it said pray without ceasing, it, we should be in a continual attitude of prayer. It's not a one time stop thing. When the Bible says ask, seek and knock, it really says keep on asking, keep on seeking and keep on knocking. That's how you get what you ask for. You keep asking, you keep seeking, and you keep knocking on the door of opportunity. Hallelujah, anyhow. So, so we, when Jesus said to Levi, who is Matthew, Matthew's gospel, the, another name for uh, Levi was Matthew, amen, or Matthew Levi, if you want to call him that, or Levi Matthew, amen, or just uh, it was a substitute for Matthew, Levi. He, he saw Levi, a tax collector. Jesus saw him and he says to him, follow me. Yes. All righty, we're we getting there, we're getting there. And he left what? Now, now, it was thought that a tax collector was a wealthy person. Why? Because he's, he's robbing people. <laughs> he's taking more than that is required. So, so it says that he left all. He, he had to have left a considerable amount. He left it all. All is, how much is left when you leave it all? Uh, see, uh, see that's, that's, that's the way the Lord counts. The Lord counts by what you have left. Oh, Lord. Mm. 
See, we give and we look at the amount we give. The Lord turns around and says, how much did you give? He looks and see what you have. Oh, oh, some folk have been out giving others based on what they have. You see, 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 the Lord don't count like we count, Corey. He knows when we've given it all. The woman who put her, 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 her two pence in the basket, she said, she's given more than they all, than, they, than all the rest of them. How, how come, Lord, she ain't gave but two pence? He said, but she gave it. See, you got to look at what people have. Look, now Dr. Rabin can tell you, they, they, they do teach this at theology school. They do teach some of this stuff out there. And Minister Booker and, and Job, Pastor Joplin and Pastor Hampton, they can tell you, they, they do. So it's what you have. I know we don't count it like that. I, I certainly have learned to count it like that, though. I said, uh, this is all I got left? <laughs> It's better I give it that way because if I look before I give it, <laughs> I might say, no, I'm not going to have enough. But the Lord knows what I have. You, you miss it, you miss it, you miss it. See, we count it beforehand and the Lord said you ought to look at it after you give it because I know what you have. Why am I dealing with that, Lord? You know what you're talking about, Lord. Follow me. That makes you a disciple. If you are not following, you are not a disciple of Christ. It means follow continuously. And Levi got up and left it what? All rose up and followed him. See, that's how you know he was a disciple because he what? Followed him. Him. I get the text, get the text, get the text. Come on, I'm getting through. I'm saying I'm not going to be as long as I was these last two Sundays. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And then it says, and Levi made him a great feast in his own house. Not, not the church house. He made him a feast in his own house. Now, 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 let me get into this story. How come feasting and God just go together? I, 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 I know y'all fault us for having too much fellowship, but, but eating... And feasting go together with God. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you look throughout the Bible, and they was always having a feast, having a banquet, sitting down, eating together. Now, there's something important about that, because if you break bread with somebody, it usually means you're in agreement. And you, you, you partaking of, you know, you, know, you, you, you partake. Levi is celebrating his conversion. And he said, I, I want to hold a, a big feast in his honor, in Jesus' honor. And Jesus has given me this word and I followed him. And let me do this great feast as I'm leaving it all. Let me have one last big dinner. And he does it and he invites all of his friends to come out. And you know, when somebody truly gets saved, they want their friends to get saved too. They want their family to get saved, too. He invites them all to this big feast where Jesus could talk to them, where they could meet with Jesus. And he says, and there was a great company of who? Now, now if I go out and get, 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 a, get a, get a, get a wino off the corner, I, I'm not wondering who his great crowd's going to be. I know more than likely it's going to be some more what? Hey, if I go pick up a prostitute, Sister Ross, you know, and she invite her friend, I, I'm assuming that they going to be sister, you know, <laughs> sister prostitutes. You get what I'm saying? Of course, and if she knew it, I invited some of my friends, they're going to be some old fellow Johns. I'm sorry, John. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I didn't mean to call your name, John. But 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 I mean, I mean, you know, if, if we go into the crack house and I bring friends, it's assumed that they are fellow crack smokers. Right. And if we come to church, you would. Oh, Lord. But 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 anyway, but, but anyway, mm -hmm. listen to me now. Follow me. He went and got some of his friends, a great company of what? 
Some more tax collectors, publicans. He went and got some of his friends. Who else he going to be friends with? So he went and got a whole big company of them and they had a big feast that he wanted them to meet Jesus because if he could be persuaded, more than likely they could be persuaded and Jesus sat down with them. Now, of course, Jesus brought some of his disciples. Okay, now watch this. And Jesus answering said unto them. Wait, 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 I skipped the verse. Look, look he sat down with them, but they're, but they're scribes and Pharisees. Really, it was the scribes of the Pharisees. They were there. And, and the Pharisees were a separatist type group. They, 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 they just believed in, in doing everything they could uh, by the law. They were real strict, keeping the oral tradition and everything. And they just didn't believe in sitting with sinners because they believed that they could be defiled. So they were looking at Jesus, who, who, who's now sitting with a great company of publicans, not just one, but a great company of winos and crack addicts and and prostitutes and drunks and thieves and Jesus was sitting with a great company of folk that they couldn't stand to be around that wasn't in their clique that was Jesus sitting with them and, and the scribes and the Pharisees who, now you know they couldn't be at the dinner now they wasn't sitting there with them now the Pharisees and the scribes wasn't sitting there with them they were looking somewhere you know they heard about it they were looking and glancing and peeping around the corner and, and, and they, they, they just knew that that was something that they should not do and the scribes and Pharisees murmured against his disciples they, they complained about it. And, you know, don't that go hand in hand with the feast? Because when you have a feast, it's going to be some complainers. And more than likely, it's going to be somebody who wasn't there. You know, they didn't do that right. That's why I didn't go. Because they didn't do it right. You, you, they, they just sitting there complaining. So these Pharisees who were separatists, who believed they were self-righteous, that they kept everything so good it made them, they, they were just self-righteous. They could save themselves. You ever met anybody like that? they just so self-righteous. All they got is murmuring against whatever you're doing. Whatever your church is doing, it's got to be wrong. they just murmuring. they just like the Pharisees. They are separatists. All they want to do is separate you from God. <laughs> Listen now, the Pharisees, the Pharisees, they, they, they murmuring against his disciples saying, why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Why do y'all eat with the tax collectors? Why do y'all eat with those robbers, those extortioners, those crack addicts, those prostitutes, those liars, those backbiters, those people who can't control themselves? Why are you sitting and eating with them? Now, they murmured to his disciples. They murmured to Jesus' followers. They didn't complain to Jesus. You, you got to watch Satan tactics. Don't y'all know we talked about this before? They don't bring it to him. They bring it to his followers. Now, this, this was a cunning way to do it now. This is a cunning way to do it because if I can get in just right to his followers, his followers will now stand against him. Oh, no, 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 no. If I can get just the right deacon, oh, Lord, <laughs> and I can put my complaint right there with the right one, he'll come against the pastor for me. I'm just saying it like that. I mean, I mean, if I can get just the right son or daughter in the house to complain to, they'll present the problem to the parent. Mama, you don't never let me go nowhere. I don't think it's right. Who, boy, who told you that? Well, Sister Jones let her son go everywhere. Boy, you ain't Sister Jones' son. How did Sister Jones even get in our conversation? You don't let somebody talk to you and get you to confront me. And you got the wrong one, baby. <laughs> got the wrong one. So, so, so the Pharisees go to his disciples and make their complaint known. Why do you eat and drink with publicans and sinners? Put a pen in that because that's what Jesus answered for to come to. Now, Jesus ain't heard nothing, not, not, not that we know of in the text, but you know, he know everything. He knows exactly what's happening. 
Jesus answered and said, how do you answer? What did Jesus do? They talk to your disciples. How are you going to answer and say anything? But Jesus know what the problem is. He answered and said, they that are whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Is there a doctor in the house? Why? Why am I asking, is there a doctor in the house? Because I got a, <laughs> I got a sick person in the house. I wouldn't call for a doctor if there was nobody sick. You're getting ready now, ain't you, brother? Brother, you're getting ready. You're getting ready. You're getting ready. Because if it ain't no sick people, you don't need no doctor. Jesus said this now. He said this. He said, now, look, Luke is the only one out of Matthew and Mark that uses a term that means that it has to do with health. The term that Matthew and Mark use has to do with being strong. They that are strong don't need a physician. They that are strong when he talked about the word whole. But Luke uses a word that means they that are sick health wise. They have need of a physician. And we know God is called the great physician. He is our doctor. He is our lawyer. What, what do you mean, lawyer? I'm talking about counselor. He is our teacher. He is our provider. He is our father. He is our high priest. He is our sacrifice. He is the Lamb of God. Our door. Our way. Uh, is there a doctor in the house? Why are you eating with sick folk? Sick and sinner go together. I, I'm, I'm, I'm making parallels in the text. Physician and Jesus, Savior, go together. So when you're talking about sinners, he's comparing them to sick people. When you're talking about physician, He's talking about a savior, a healer, a deliverer. He's saying now, now a deliverer goes with sick people. A healer and sick people go together. A physician and sick folk go together. If you didn't have sick folk, you wouldn't need a physician. If you didn't have sinners, you wouldn't need a savior. Oh, God. Now, theologically, we finna get correct. If it wasn't for sinners, there wouldn't be a need for the church. Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I come clean with you? If there were no sinners, wouldn't be any need for any Christians. Can I make it plain to you? We wouldn't need Pharisees if it wasn't no sinners. They had lost focus. They thought they were sent to the righteous. <laughs> come on, come on, let's go. We, 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 we almost, we'll send us away now. Is there a doctor in the house? Why? Why is there a doctor now? Got sick folk. Jesus told them this plainly. He says, I came not to call who? This is a play on words, Sister Page. What he's really saying, I ain't come for self-righteous folk. Do you know who the gospel really works on? People who know they're wrong. People who know they need a savior. That's who the gospel is for. For people who know they need a savior. Let me, come on, God, no, 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 no. Why does the gospel work so well in the hospital? Because usually there are people who know they need a physician. I'm talking about the great physician. There are some people that the local doctor can't help. They need the help of the great. Come on back then, preacher. Wind it back down. What can I preach? See, people who already know, think they self-righteous, I can't preach to you. 
You feel like you ain't done nothing. He ain't talking to me. I ain't never drunk nothing. I ain't never cussed. I ain't never cheated on my wife. I ain't, you just keep on going down the line. Somewhere down the line, we're going to get to you. And if you get on down the line to you, then I'm talking to you. Just because I ain't called your thing out. I got a thing to do. I mean, I'm down there in the list too. I need a savior. Hey, he came for me. Is there a doctor in the house? Yes, there's a doctor in the house. Watch this, watch this, watch this down. Watch this. He says, he says, now look, remedy, here you are, here I come. I came not to call the righteous, but I came to call sinners to repentance. Repentance means change. To turn from your way of doing things to turn to God's way of doing things. It ain't just turning 180 degrees because you can turn 180 degrees and still be going in the wrong. I need you to turn to God's way. Can somebody tell me something? Jesus, Jesus told them plainly, Corey, I'm sitting with them because you won't. Has the church gotten too self-righteous that a wine old can't sit and feast on the word of God? We too scared that the sinner gonna change us instead of us changing the sinner. Ain't it the truth? The crack dealer come, who he going to say? He's going to sell all us to crack. If the liquor store owner come to church, who going to buy all the liquor? We going to buy all the liquor there. Huh? No, we got to be strong enough to they don't change us, but the word changes them. Oh, that's it. I'm going to be shorter, shorter, shorter. Repentance, repentance. He said, no, 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 no. I came seeking that which was. Jesus knew who he was coming for. He was coming for the oppressed, the depressed, the, 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 the sick, the hungry, the outcast. That's who he was coming for. He was coming for people who knew they were the underdog. Now we got to, if we sitting up here trying to preach to self-righteous folk and wondering why they are not affected because you got the wrong one, baby. If you take the word to where it belongs, you will have a better outcome. <laughs> sitting up in here fussing and, cu and not cussing, but fussing. <laughs> Every now and then I do a little cussing, but I don't mean to do it. But let me say this. <laughs> Get out of this. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. I got to get out of this. Look. Listen. Now, listen. See, uh, listen. Uh, <laughs> I mean to say this here. If you take the word where it belongs, the word still works. You go down to the jailhouse and you wonder why them eels get alert. Especially when they know that they're locked up and there's no help. And the word of God gives them peace to be able to hang on till their day come. You, you, you go in the intensive. I, I ain't talking about just the general care. I ain't talking about just the step down unit. You go on down there into the, uh, I don't know, step down two times unit. You go into the, what, what is the IC, ICCU or something like that. Something like that. It's, it's got some more letters to it. It's got some more. You go down in there and you see how receptive your prayer will be. See how receptive the gospel will be. See how receptive the reading of scripture will be. See, come, come on. I know the, the world is too busy. Folks think they got it made. They're going around and able to kick their leg up and watch the football game. But you go into one of them, I see you, see you, you, you go into one of them jail cells where they own death row. You, you, you go down into there where somebody can't pay their rent and about to be put out. You go down in there where they're being put outdoors and living on the corner. You go, oh Lord, have mercy. You go down in there where they don't know where their next meal coming from and you see how much time 
they have. You ain't got to rhyme to preach to them. You ain't got to say a poem to preach to them. No, no, you ain't got to do that. You, you, you ain't got to get up in the right note. You ain't got to hit G to get them. You can be down in the key of Z and you still got them. Going down into the nursing home where they, where they feel like they're just going to be wasting on the way. You go in there and you see that they'll give you more audience than some of these self-righteous folks sitting in here with their Sunday school book. But won't get with you not one time because they think they got it made. But God have mercy is there a doctor. I need a doctor. I need a doctor. Lord have mercy. I need a doctor. Ask Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus was just really saying, is there a doctor? Sitting by the roadside begging, Blind Bartimaeus heard Jesus was coming along that way. And he cried out, thou son of David, thou son of David, is there a doctor? There was a man laying on a mat. They grabbed four corners, took it up on the roof. Lowered the man down through the roof, tore up the man roof, tore it up, put a hole in the roof. They didn't care how much it cost. They wanted to know, is there a doctor in this house? That's what they wanted to know. Was there a doctor in the house? There was a man with a withered hand. They just wanted to know. There was a woman, body bent, body bowed for 18 years. She just wanted to know. There was Jay Arias. He wanted to know, is there a doctor? I got a sick daughter. Is there a doctor? The woman with the issue of blood had her issue for 18 years. She just touched the hem of his garment, but she wanted to know, is there? I don't know where you've been. But since I've been hollering that out, and probably people putting on Facebook, he's too loud, he's too loud. What you really ought to be asking, I need a doctor in this house. I ain't, I ain't talking about the brick and mortar house, I'm talking about, I need a doctor for my heart. Because I'm not living right. I need a doctor because I'm all alone and depressed. I need a doctor because they said I got cancer and I don't know what to do. I need a doctor in this. Well, I'm going to tell you about this doctor. Unusual doctor. He hung bled and died. How many doctors do you know that will take on the look of sickness? The Bible says he became sin who knew no sin. He took on what we had and he wore it well. I couldn't tell that it was getting him down because he wore my sin well. He died six to the ninth hour. He had my clothes on so that I could put his clothes on. He became to look like unrighteousness that I might be the righteousness of God. You, you don't understand. He wore my stripes well, for by his stripes I am Is there a doctor in the house? Those were supposed to be my stripes. They said they whipped him well. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said they whipped him well. They were supposed to be whipping me because I was the publican. I am the sinner that Jesus took time out to sit down and feast with him. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. 
And he said, if you will open up the door, I will come in to you and sup with you. I'll have a feast with you. The table is spread. You can eat in the presence of your enemies because God is an able God. He is my great physician. He died six to the ninth hour. But early, I said early, early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth. All power. He got up with black power. He got up with brown power. He got up with white power. He got up with green power. He got up with all. The door of the church is open. Thank you, Jesus. Is there a doctor in the house? I need a doctor. If you're here, Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bible says except a man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. The Bible teaches, confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, and thou shalt be saved. If you're here, this is your opportunity. Is there anyone here who want to give their life to Christ? Just walk up. If you're watching by Facebook or YouTube, call our number. And I mean call our number. Don't let the devil win. Last week, my, I, don't, I don't have one message on my phone from you. But I know it was you who have need of a physician. I need him. And I know you need him. If you haven't committed your life to Christ with any other church, you need to have a relationship. And don't tell me when folk get born again, they don't come together in fellowship. They do. So call me, 870-735-6300. Call me. I want to pray with you. Amen. Thank you. Communion. Before we give our offering, we're going to get your offering ready. Get your offering ready. Get your offering ready. In your homes, get your bread, get your wine, get your bread, get your crackers, get crackers, get you some type of juice, some type of juice or Kool-Aid or something to represent our wine. We can do this together. Hallelujah.
Amen. Thank you, Doc. Amen. Amen. We ask you to partake. Take your cup with the red and wine. Come on. Come on around and get your cup, your bread and your wine. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy of all of the praise. Say it. God, God, forgive me, for I have sinned against you. Amen. That, that assures us that we are taken now and that we are worthy. Amen. He gave them the bread and he told them, Take and eat. Let us eat. Amen. He took the cup, he blessed it, he gave it to them and told them, that this is my blood that has been shed for you for the remission of sin. Take ye, drink all of it. Amen. He did have a place. They did have a place to go. We've got our many different we homes and other places we that we're going to go. We uh -huh. just ask God to bless us as we uh -huh. travel. Amen. Okay. Hey, bro. Hey, okay. But make sure you give your cup to one of the brothers. Amen. You can cut the feed if you got you have yeah. Amen. Let me say this offering.